Hey guys, what's going on? It's Big Pasta 92 here, and we are back with an updated version of the Slave Pens grind. We are going over uh, the updated kill methods on the additional mobs that we're going to be adding. The last video was pretty much just for leveling mages with low gear, since when it came out, you know, that's what everybody was. Now that we've all had time, we are leveling up, we are level 70, we have some gear, we've been in Kara. I'm going to post a little bit of an updated boost that you can do, uh, and you can bring people in, whether you have two accounts and you bring your alt like I do, or you just want to boost boost buddies, you want to sell some boosts, whatever you're into, this is the updated method that's going to do a little bit more XP per hour and people are going to be a little bit more enticed to buy. So just to get started, let's go over the consumes real quick. Uh, basically, you don't need anything expensive. Now that you're level 70, you do, I mean, everything's pretty easy. Uh, if you are, you know, leveling, you can still do this entire thing. But it's really difficult, and I wouldn't suggest it, especially the second pull after the initial 31 mobs are just terrible. But, um, so basically just buy any mana oils you want. Here I'm using Superior Mana Oil, and that's, you know, as good a choice as any. You don't need to spend a fortune on consumes, but you will make the gold back doing this farm, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, major mana potions are what I use just because supers are still crazy expensive, and, uh, you don't need to use them all that often. And Sagefish Delight, as always, it's really cheap, it's like... 30 silver for a stack of five and it's just a little bit of extra mp5 on top so we use that as well and then you just use your typical uh frost armor arcane intellect and dampen magic same as the last video and we're just going to go through the first pull uh just so if anybody who hasn't seen the first video wants to know how to do this part intricately then we're gonna, not gonna you know so you don't have to watch two videos so first pull super super simple just wait for this mob to pad by don't get too close you don't want to pull them and then you're going to enter your pull phase i'm just going to skip forward a little bit here and get to the sweet spot where you want to hang out so right here on this little center island as long as you're not a gnome character because you can fall in and swim which is terrible uh this is your safe spot you can just kind of weave between the two mobs here and wait for your precise moment to pull them this is my favorite i like to slow that first mob a little bit then catch the second one and then you blink just to get a little bit of distance if you're level 70 once again you can go all the way around here and you're not going to pull that extra slave master if you're leveling you're going to have to blink through and avoid some frost bolts wouldn't recommend it um and then these guys right here obviously you either just blink past or you frost nova if it's not going to aggro any of the other slaves so at this point we have to worry about the caster mob up here the enchantress that's going past the additional bog mobs that we want to pull you want to get up here as fast as possible just to see if the pat actually works in your favor but if they're patting backwards like they are here you have to slow the mobs behind you and you have to do a little bit of extra work because since you do have the coil fangs in your pull they will social the bog strokes won't social they won't pull any of the coil fangs but since there are coil fangs in this pack they absolutely will pull those enchanters with a smile on their face so just keep them slowed rank one all day it's going to pay for itself eventually and then you're very very carefully you're going to watch your distance move around nova make sure you don't hit those slaves if you hit the slaves now you got to deal with frost bolts and it's a much much more difficult bolt you don't want that so keep rank one frost bolting just keep them going as you're about to be able to see here i think the enchantresses are going to come around the corner you're going to see them continuing that patrol and once again if you're level 70 you don't have to worry too much about pulling them if you're a low level low level and you're leveling you're going to have to watch your aggro you're not going to be able to get as much space as i do right here just on this nova because you might risk pulling the additional pack that's padding forward so always be mindful of that everything that you do at a lower level will be more difficult in this pull so uh if it looks easy here it might not be if you're level 65 66 67 so the extra pack of bugs up here on the right is what we're going for so keep them on behind you just rank ones slowed you have all the time in the world there's no reason to rush this pull if you think something's going wrong just try not to make mistakes because you're more likely to die just panicking than you are actually than if you just keep your composure keep the blizzards down and keep distance between yourself and the mobs giving your blink time to get off cooldown and give yourself that emergency distance so use your blink here to get through these bogs jump around rank one cone of cold jump go forward and target the mobs that are right behind this steam bolt Hit them with a counter spell. I like counter spell because you don't have to face them. You can just cast behind you and it's easy. And then Nova these defenders. And that's pretty much the first pull. You can pull uh, 
the caster moms up here, the technicians, but I don't suggest it. I suggest just finishing this pull like this and then leaving the technicians for the next pull that we're going to do with the mobs that cast cripple and uh, the other technicians as well. It just makes this kill phase a little bit easier and you already have to kill a bunch of technicians in the other pull anyway. So if you're planning on doing the second pull, that's the way to do it. But if you only want to do the first pull and you just want a little bit of extra XP from those two, that's fine too. What I'd suggest you do is just keep pulling them straight and then follow along the wall all the way to the right and pull the technicians as they're at the end of the pad, get them bunched together, know them back into the hallway, reset and just keep taking them this same way. So now that you're working down the hallway, if you had those technicians, it'd be the same exact thing. You just keep them slowed here. Um, once you have them nice and packed up, you can really start to crank out some damage. If you're level 70, once again, because you got some mana to spare, you're not really worried about that. You have some gear if you're leveling, you might want to be more careful. You might want to pick and choose when you're max ranking a little bit more carefully. You might need to use your mana stone cooldowns more effectively and in coordination with your mana potion cooldowns. It just everything gets more complicated when you're the lower level. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then when you come out here, you have to be very careful to make sure that you widen the blizzard because sometimes they pad outwards, sometimes they pad inwards, and sometimes they do both. <laughs> so you have to be very careful about placement just so they don't miss anything. And then the only other spots that you have to avoid is under these steam vaults. If you're casting blizzard, they can still get under these steam vaults and the blizzard will like hit the top of the steam vault and it won't hit them. It makes no sense, but you'll see it here. Like it's, they kind of like skip through it and get a little bit of extra distance. So you don't really want to ever cast max rank under those beams. But uh, and once they're out from under there, there's no worries. You can cast max rank again, get some more damage in there and then wait for them to get very, very close. Most of this pull is just figuring out where you can't do certain things. Like you can't cast max rank blizzard under that steam bolt. And you can't blink in certain spots or it'll stop you short. Also under those steam bolts that happens. So uh, once you turn them, you can get a flame strike in because they're going to be nice and like straight horizontal coming straight towards you. That's a good time to get a flame strike in if you have the presence of mind spec like I do. And then just kind of blink and get around these sides as fast as you can. If they get a little distance on you, that's fine. It's just they're so buggy and hard to slow down when they're coming back around this way. Sometimes I just blink straight forward and go all the way back to the ramp. But then, as always, if they're under the steam bolts, just use rank ones. Just get them bunched back together. Target the very closest mob and make sure you're watching the blizzard timer under his health bar. The second it ticks three, he's no longer in the blizzard. If he's in the blizzard, it'll keep restacking. Four, four, four. The second it hits three... He's out and it's time to move. You always want to be casting, moving, casting, moving. You almost never want to cast twice in the same spot. But you just keep taking them around that loop. And the boosties, as long as they're right outside, the, uh, right outside in the instant, right in the entrance of the instance, they're going to get full XP from any kill that happens before the bridge here. The bridge that the boss patrols up and down, that is. So you finish off the kill. It's pretty easy. You've seen the whole entire thing. I'm just going to skip forward for the sake of time here. You take them down the hallway one more time, loot, and then you're ready for the next part of the pull. Now, this pull, I don't actually recommend doing it if you're leveling, unless you've got some really awesome gear from Classic, like you got your Tier 2 or Tier 2.5, or you have your, uh, you know, your 5 piece Zulgarab, you're casting really fast flame strikes, something like that. It requires a couple weak auras. Uh, one, just for the cripple cast. I tried to make one for the Frostbolt cast just by manipulating the code and typing in Frostbolt, but it didn't end up working, so I couldn't find a Frostbolt one because sometimes you will pull the additional Slave Masters that have the Frostbolt mobs, and you can't really see that without the weak aura. But that's neither here nor there. I'll include that weak aura in the uh, description below, so make sure you check that out as well before you try this. It's really, really hard to do without the weak aura. We'll skip through here, and that's just me screwing around with that. All right. So right here about is where you want the boss to be before you do the pull. And when he's patrolling up the bridge, those are the two technicians that patrol, by the way. When he's patrolling up the bridge, you basically want him to be right about where he's going to be when I turn around here, which is just heading up over the top right here. So right when he's heading up and he's about to turn around, this is when you make your move. This is when you pull. He's rank one blizzard to pull those corner mobs, rank one blizzard to pull these mobs, Blink under the bridge just to get extra distance. Rank 1 Blizzard. I'd suggest actually using Ice Lance to pull these ones. I just use Rank 1 because it's instinctive. I use it for most things. And then I counterspell the technicians on the far side. 
Use your Kona Colds. You're going to have to take a couple hits there, but once again, if you're level 70, it's not that big of a deal. And then use your Blink to finish off the distance, trying to group them together again. Now, I suggest taking these guys all the way back to the start of the instance. If you want, you can do it the same way that you just saw the last pull done, but I wouldn't suggest it just because the cripple distance does make it more difficult. So the way this cripple weak aura works is the second they start casting it, you'll see the cripple icon pop up. You need to keep moving a second or two at a second or two at most after that pops up or else you're going to get crippled cast on you and this whole pull is it, it, you very very highly increase your chances of dying and uh, it's it's not a good thing so don't do it don't do it it's it's going to make the whole pull much more difficult if not impossible but make sure you have an ice block cancel aura if you do have to take one or even two with cold snap you can get out of there real quick but you want to be careful because sometimes they follow up the cripple casts. So like wait to make sure there isn't a second cripple coming before you use your ice block. So keep these guys bunched up. You're not going to be able to do a whole lot of big damage to them until they are. And the biggest pain in the pain in the ass about this pull is the technician stomping cast, right? So they're constantly like getting out of being stacked up and you have to restack them and it really spreads out your damage. And eventually when the mobs start going slower at low health, that causes issues as well. So just try and stay on top of it. Try and be mindful of the weak aura. Make sure you're keeping your max distance. And another very important part right here. Do not hit these slaves if you don't have to. The second frost bolts are coming at you, especially without a weak aura, you're in rough shape. You're in very, very rough shape. It's going to happen inevitably up here in the next part of the pull, but it's a little bit more manageable because they're just kind of always in your sight. If you have to take a frost bolt in the next room, it's not a big deal. You don't want to take it in this room for the reason I'm about to show you right now, and that's because when you head back towards the beginning, the floor you're walking on is going to take a dip, and what that does is it cuts off line of sight to your blizzard and the mob, so you kind of have to make a break for it. As you'll see, right about here is the last place you're going to be able to get a blizzard off. The floor is going to take a dip, and if you take even three steps forward from right here, you're not going to be able to cast behind you. So you got to hustle, you got to blink, and get straight through these slave masters that are inevitably going to pull. But as long as you don't keep them engaged, it's not going to matter. And if you want to keep them engaged, it's some extra mobs, so that's a good thing too. So hit them with the rank one blizzard, try and get them restacked again. This is why this frostbolt mob isn't that big of a deal. You can just kind of clearly see them on the side casting, so you know to keep moving, and you never have to hit them with your rank one, right? You can like clearly see them there. I ticked him, so he's not gonna reset, but if I cut off the cast, you know what I'm saying. Like you can you can avoid that guy, and he will reset and he won't he won't give you too many problems as long as you don't let him, or you can just kill him. Like I said, it makes it a little bit more difficult, but it's not necessarily a death sentence. So this is where you really want to get your big damage in. I've still got 50% mana, so it's time to really start cranking out these max ranks. Because if you have to turn them around here, it does get a little bit more difficult. When you're at the end of the room, if you have to turn them, it's almost guaranteed they're going to get some cripples off. So hopefully you have your ice block up at that point. Um, if you don't, just really, really, really try and get them killed here. It can be done. I think I do it in this video. I don't really remember. I recorded it a few days ago but it's not a position you want to put yourself in so just be mindful of their health especially if you have to take the turn you're probably going to want to do it right there where the water stops i did a little bit far here but um i think i do have to turn them right here and i will probably have to incorporate an ice block too here comes a slave handler you can always use a nova on him too because he's a little bit too you know far up too spread up if i use the nova there that's probably a better stacking technique these things are really really low yeah, one Nova, and there's the block. Yeah, so it gets a little bit difficult, especially if a cripple goes off. But, uh, you know, at this point in the pull, they're, pre they're pretty dead. Like, it's not hard to kill them before you get to that point. So you finish off the kills, and let's just show you guys the numbers real quick. And obviously, if there's one slave handler left, you just finish him with the Frostbolt. Okay, at this point, I realized my alt was actually in a different slave pens instance, and I didn't realize it big mess up for you man big pasta 92 but luckily we have nova instance tracker on this guy and you will see i can't give you an exact xp count unfortunately but it's 48 mobs 31 from the first pull and the additional 17 from the second and that is a really good boost guys if you can get it done you know quickly efficiently and really have little downtime you can bang out five runs of that in no time at all and people are paying top dollar for it right now but that's all we got today guys thank you again remember to like subscribe comment and hit me with that follow on twitch.tv forward slash big 92 we'll see you next time
Bye.